According to a current list of all attacks on June 12 that were logged, there have been at least 100 physical assaults on Bitcoin users or the infrastructure that supports Bitcoin transactions. The list includes all physical assaults on Bitcoin users or facilities, such as cryptocurrency ATMs, that have been reported as of 2014. I have put a lot of research on this video, so I highly recommend watching it in its entirety to ensure you don't miss out on any valuable information that can boost your crypto investments. However, please note that the content provided in this channel is for informational purposes only, and should not be considered financial advice. Welcome to Crypto Life Money, your go-to-go -go source for the latest developments in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. I'm Melvin, your host, and on this channel, we'll be diving deep into the world of crypto, from the newest coins and tokens to the most exciting blockchain projects and developments. So, if you're ready to explore the world of digital currency and stay ahead of the game, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Let's dive into the world of crypto together. The list revealed by Bitcoin enthusiast Jameson Lopp, the chief technical officer of CASA, and posted on the public code repository GitHub reveals that Hal Finney was the target of the first known attack on Bitcoin in 2014, according to the list. Finney was one of the original Bitcoin proponents who had communication with the cryptocurrency's enigmatic creator, Satoshi Nakamoto. On that day, Press reports claimed that Finney had been swayed as a result of months of internet abuse. Being swayed is a cybercrime in which the attacker makes a fictitious police complaint. When the SWAT squad arrives and breaks into the accused offender's house, they learn that the caller made up the crime. Finney was assaulted in 2014 by an unidentified attacker who wanted $1,000 worth of Bitcoin, in return for withholding his personal information. Without receiving payment, Finney's home address was made public by the ransomware attacker, who also called the police to report Finney's intention to commit suicide. A few months later, in August 2014, Finney passed away. Two Bitcoin ATMs were stolen by robbers in the Netherlands in 2015, which is another noteworthy incident. Lop became a victim when he was swayed and forced to hand over his Bitcoin two years later, in 2017. The attacker in this instance phoned the police and claimed that Lop had not shot his wife. Before opting to have Lop swayed, the assailant tried to demand 100 Bitcoin, worth approximately $700,000. New users, criminals, and attackers have the idea that Bitcoin is a real item that can be stolen, much like cash. However, because cryptocurrencies are digital in nature, coin holders must first confirm a transaction by signing using their private keys, which presents a challenge for attackers who did not complete their research, such as those who stole the crypto ATM in 2015. The assailant is unable to grab currency without private keys. Additionally, the victim benefits from the transparency of crypto transactions since their assets can be tracked after reporting the incident to law police. Due to the transparency of the underlying blockchains like Ethereum or Binance Smart Chain, hackers frequently wind up having to reverse funds to avoid having their identities disclosed. This is especially true with decentralized finance or DeFi protocols. Fire Gary Gensler a lawmaker opposes the crypto agenda of the SEC chairman. American legislators are protesting the Securities and Exchange Commission's recent assault on the cryptocurrency industry. Congressman Warren Davidson has advocated for SEC chairman Gary Gensler's dismissal and has been particularly outspoken in his criticism. The SEC's activities against the cryptocurrency business, according to a recent statement by Congressman Davidson, are unfair, and the U.S. financial markets need to be shielded from a tyrannical chairman. The Sex Stabilization Act, which he has presented, seeks to reform the organization and oust Gary Gensler as chair. In order to guarantee that all rulemaking, enforcement, and investigations are carried out by a more balanced and diverse team, the act suggests changing the present single chairman leadership structure with a six commissioner body. The goal of this reform is to make it impossible for one person's objective to take precedence over that of investors and the market. In addition, the proposed law will establish a new executive director post to manage the SEC's daily operations, ensuring that the organization runs effectively and efficiently under clear leadership. Congressman Davidson claims that the SEC's continued abuse of its authority is damaging the market and impeding innovation in the cryptocurrency sector. To guarantee that the interests of the market are safeguarded for years, in his opinion, serious change is required. Additionally, Tom Emmer, a fellow legislator, has backed Congressman Warren Davidson in his appeal to defend the cryptocurrency business from what they see to be the sex overreaching and politically driven measures. 
Congressman Emmer thinks that clear and consistent monitoring, not political gamesmanship, is what American investors and business deserve. He contends that the SEC should prioritize the interests of the investors it is tasked with protecting rather than the capricious whims of its chair. Recent allegations from the SEC accuse prominent cryptocurrency exchanges Binance and Coinbase of running unregistered securities exchanges. Crypto investors and industry experts are outraged by these moves because they think the SEC's excessively tough attitude would hinder innovation in the rapidly developing crypto business. These issues are addressed in Congressman Davidson's proposed legislation, which also offers a more fair way to regulate the cryptocurrency market. The SEC Stabilization Act seeks to reform the organization and guarantee that its decisions are made in the best interests of the market. The proposed law would also oblige the SEC to issue precise instructions on how to regulate the crypto economy, giving investors and companies operating in this market much needed certainty. Favorable Regulatory Environment for Cryptocurrencies, A16Z expands to London. With the opening of a new cryptocurrency office in London, venture capital company A16Z's founder and CEO, Andreessen Horowitz, is expanding internationally. The venture capital firm's latest move increases the number of US-based enterprises involved in the cryptocurrency industry that are seeking for a supportive climate abroad. The opening of Andreessen Horowitz's first overseas office in London later this year was announced on June 11. Chris Dixian, the company's founder and managing partner, spoke on the value of regulatory certainty when creating decentralized blockchain firms. He said that one of the causes for a 16Z's entrance into the UK was the pressure from US crypto regulatory authorities. Decentralization, in the executive's opinion, is essential for accelerating the advantages and development of Web3 and blockchain firms. He said, nevertheless, that it takes time for projects to metamorphose into DeFi networks. Most essential, a favorable regulatory environment would be needed for this transition process. Dixian added that before expanding in the area, the company spoke with the UK Prime Minister. He pointed out that the decision was the result of several months of fruitful discussions with UK officials, HM Treasury, and the local financial conduct authority. The CEO claimed that Web3's benefits are known to the UK government. As a result, the government is promoting Web3 technologies by enacting supportive regulations that reward blockchain businesses and promote decentralization. Dixon stated that while expressing his excitement for the expansion move, we're thrilled to open our first international office in a jurisdiction that welcomes blockchain technology and is committed to creating a predictable business environment by pursuing regulations that both embrace Web3 and protect consumers. Dixon spoke about a 16Z's operations in the US and how substantially the company has invested there. It will thus make an effort to work with US authorities and legislators, which will help to push for more clarity in the regulations of crypto startups. According to its scheduled activities, the CSS program will take place in the spring of 2024. Entrepreneurs from the UK and other countries who are interested in a career in Web3 would find the CSS program to be appealing. Over 8,000 people applied for the most recent CSS program, and 26 companies received offers of financing from a 16Z. Data from the Sovereign Wealth Fund Institute show that a 16Z is the largest venture capital firm worldwide. It claims assets under management of more than $35.8 billion. That's all for today's video. We hope you found this video informative and helpful in staying up to date on the latest developments in Bitcoin and other digital currencies. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more exciting content like this. Also, be sure to leave a comment down below with your thoughts and opinions on the topics we discussed in this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.